there and welcome to Celebration Church's online service experience. My name is Pastor Emmanuel Iren and with me is Pastor Laji Iren. Get ready to have the time of your life. It doesn't matter where you are in the nooks and crannies of this world, the Word of God is about to hit you like never before. We've been praying for you and here you are as a specific answer to our prayers. We truly believe that the Word of God will reach you in today's service, answer your questions, heal your body, your heart and your soul. Amen. So get out your notepads, your pen and get ready to participate as though you were here physically because God is with you anyways. For your progress and joy in the faith, don't forget to like and subscribe to this channel. God bless you. See, See you in church. church. This is a success story. How we effectively evangelize and make disciples off and deploy people who once upon a time were mere seekers as mature disciples and vibrant ministers of the gospel. How we envision all men to celebrate endless life in Christ and lay the focus on him and his finished work, shifting our attention from ours to his. How we raise people of like passion whose heart beat for lost souls, people who labor in the word and prayer, whose feet run with the gospel in their hands like a raging inferno spreading like wildfire through the nations. How we seek to know Christ and Him alone crucified, building up ourselves in our most holy faith, praying in the Holy Ghost, releasing sweet smelling savor and worship like elixir for a ruptured soul, edified by the word of His grace and skilled in the word of righteousness, how we serve God by His Spirit, how we boast in Christ Jesus, put no confidence in the flesh, how we experience progress and joy in the faith. This is Celebration Church. We're in Christ, for Christ, with joy. I am sensitive to the needs of my brothers and sisters. I am sensitive to the needs of my brothers and sisters. I am sensitive this morning. I repete coprates berapakaya ruputo kupo esupaya. Come and let the love for your brothers and sisters in Christ. Let it show. Let it show. Be fervent. Be fervent. Be fervent. Be fervent. Brete kopaya. Apale kombrie. Sulependia. Repeteko. Apayate. Suteke. Suteke. Etapalia. Ropokopo. Epelekoti. Itumbi tekai. Baruti pendo. Ripendo. Epelekopria. Aparopotos. Needs are met. Needs are met. Long standing issues resolved because I supply. Because I supply. Because I supply. In the name of Jesus. Because I supply. Perapatai. Zutukutupe. Epete kopo. Repete kete. Itukuparia. Metokopo. Metokopo. Asate. Rute. 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 Eh. Ata eletumbria brota peletis eparitus tekete tekete atopratis atopratis acto vrectese zombria katai brecto cumbria te ecta in ecto oprect it shataya macope I supply I supply this morning I supply this morning I supply this morning Shapateke, mateketus, brateketos, ripitikai, zutukupo. No need will go on met today. No need will go on met today. Shetapelatus, shetapelatus, repeteko, repeteko. I discern my part and I walk in it. I walk in it. I walk in it. I walk in it. Ele parutietes. Ele parutietes. Shalapale combria. Menombritikis. Celebrando saliba. Emprocta felis. Zutikites. Hallelujah. 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 Are we ready to take our confession this morning? Are we ready? We're going to say in this service, my life is about to be changed forever. In this service, 
and fraud are aligned with the will of God. I initiate everything that I shall have begun in ministry, in family, in health, in career, in relationships. Graces are imparted unto me in today's service. Oh, you don't say that like you mean it. Graces are imparted unto me in today's service. As the word of God is taught, I'm attentive. The eyes of my understanding are flooded with lights. I'm not distracted. I experience progress and joy in the faith. I experience joy in the faith. As the word of God is taught, false doctrines are demolished. As the word of God is taught, strongholds are pulled down. As the word of God is taught, my convictions are strengthened. My convictions are strengthened. The word of God prevails in this city. The word of God prevails in this city. The word of God prevails in this land. In the name of Jesus. The word of God prevails in the nations of the world. Oh, come and see it and say it. The word of God prevails in this world. It prevails in this nation. It prevails in this nation. It prevails in this nation. Are you ready? Glory to God. Hallelujah. Celebration Church returns. Is that the best you can do? Somebody rejoice some more. Hey! Come on now. Are you ready to give God some praise? You know the song. Come on, let me see you move. I know he rescued my soul His blood has covered my sins Do you believe? I believe My shame is taken away My pain is hidden as day So what you gonna do? What you gonna do? I raise a banner. Come on, raise it. Banner. Everybody say. My soul, his blood has covered my sins.
to fill me. You are too faithful to disappoint me. You've proven yourself in my life, and I've come to realize you're too faithful to fill me. You're too faithful to fill me. You're too faithful. You're too faithful to disappoint me. You've yourself in my life. You've yourself. You've been faithful in my through the years, God. This is my conclusion, Jesus. Yeah, yeah. We say you're too faithful to fail us, God. You're too faithful to fail me. Too faithful. Too faithful. For you all, oh, Jesus, so you are a rock, so dependable. You promise yourself for the years. You promise yourself in my life. You promise yourself in our life. You are so faithful. Hey, hey, you are so faithful to fail me. You can never ever fail. You can never ever. You brought on yourself in my life, my life, in real life. You're too faithful to fail. You've proven yourself in my life, and I've come to realize. You say you've proven yourself. Thank you, Jesus. Has he been faithful? Has he been faithful? Lift your hands right now and just rattle in the spirit. Pray in the spirit right now. Say, Father, we thank you for your faithfulness. 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 What a good, good father you are. Hallelujah. For in Jesus' precious name, we have prayed. Turn your Bible, Psalms chapter 91 from verse 3. Psalms 91 from verse 3. The Bible says, For he will deliver you from the snare of the fowler and from the deadly pestilence. I thought I would hear an amen there. He says, He will cover you with his pinions and under his wings will you find refuge. He says, His faithfulness is a shield and a buckler. You will not fear the terror of the night, nor the arrow that flies by day, nor the pestilence that stalks in darkness. Not the destruction that wastes at noonday. Verse 7 says, A thousand shall fall by thy side, and ten thousand by your right hand, but they shall not come near you. Hallelujah. It says they shall not come near you, because God is faithful. And so we're going to be praying this morning, and I want you to say with me, we declare that the security climate of this nation is safeguarded and operated by the angels of the living God. Say from the FCT to all 36 states of the Federation, the people of God are kept safe. They are protected. They are shielded. Lift your voice right now and lift your hands and begin to decree and declare. Oh, 
we declare that people are kept safe in all the 36 states of this federation. They are kept safe in, this, in the capital city. In the name of Jesus, oh, you give your angels charge. You give your angels charge. You give your angels charge of us. Oh, patelebe, rokapon delebe, rakapateto sopatai, riki bundo lo palabai. None of us will be a victim of the casualties of these days. Esetekos, ropataya. Do you have family members in this country? Lift your voice right now and declare that supernaturally they are kept safe. We are kept safe. We are protected. We are protected. Oh, Kapo Rokopanamai. Oh, we see angels dispersed in their numbers in every city, every town, every village. Oh, Pata Rokopondo Sopalatai. Ateketekete. Rapatata. Oh, our going out, we are kept safe. In our coming in, we are kept safe. No matter the means of transportation, we are kept safe. Oh, Patele boss, Reke Palatayapa, Reko Sopata. We refuse to partake of the casualties of this time. We are kept safe. Our children are kept safe. Our teenagers are kept safe by the power of God. Esotes, Rekete, Matekenemo, Ateko Sopatalapa, Rukupate, Oko Sopata. Bring to naught every plan of the enemy, every plan of wicked people. Oh, so patala paya, reketele pene boss, shata tata tapalata, aketo patai, ekeso palata. There is safety, 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 safety. Ateko pata pata pata, akate kete, rekepetele pai, ato so pata. Oh, so pata, eketo palata. Even if a thousand falls or ten thousand by our right hands, they shall not come near us, not near our family. In the name of Jesus, pototo pata tata tata tata, eketo palata. Oh, pato so set, ako pata ya. He will give his angels charge of us. God is our refuge and our fortress. Oh, we will not fear. We are not scared. We are not scared. He is faithful. He is faithful. He is faithful. Akopato sopata paya. Oh, patekenemos. Ruka patalabai. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Jesus. For in Jesus' precious name we have prayed. This second prayer will be reading for 1 Timothy chapter 1, verse 12. 1 Timothy chapter 1 and verse 12. The Bible says, And I thank Christ Jesus our Lord, who has enabled me, for that he counted me faithful, putting me into ministry. This was Apostle Paul speaking. And so I want us to read this together, but this time I want you to replace I with we and me with us. Are you ready? So 1 Timothy 1, 12, let's take it. 1, 2, go. And we thank Christ Jesus our Lord, who has enabled us, for that he counted us faithful, putting us into the ministry. Hallelujah. Celebration Church is going to be 10 years in November. Are you excited? Shout glory. Hallelujah. It's been 10 years of transformative power. 10 years around the gospel in our day. 10 years of miracles, signs, and wonders. Are you thankful? Are you grateful? And so this morning you are going to say, Thank you, Daddy. Say, Thank you, Daddy. Say, Thank you, Daddy. For all that you have done through CCI Global. Thank you for the thousands of lives transformed. Thank you for the billions more that will be transformed. Say so thank you for sending us and for sponsoring us. Are you ready to thank him? Lift your voice right now and begin to say, Father, we thank you. We thank you. We thank you. Oh, your hand is backing us up. Thank you for confirming your word with power. Ten years of your faithfulness. Ten years of grace. Ten years of uncommon grace. 
of miracles, of signs, of wonders, of progress and joy in the faith. Oh, we've seen thousands transformed by your power and we are thankful. Oh, you have taken away the stony out, out of many and given them their heart of flesh. Father, we say thank you. Father, we are thankful. We are grateful. Oh, Patelis, Rakopan de la Poso Palatai, Reketele Polocoso Palata, Aketosa. We are grateful. We are grateful. We are grateful. We are grateful. Thank you, Daddy. Asata, Rekepos, Shatapata, for counting us worthy to air out the gospel in our day. Father, we say thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Asopata. Rekepala Telebos. Shatatatata. Thank you for all the lives transformed. Thank you for the billions more. Thank you for the billions more. Oh, we see with the eyes of prophecy. Oh, the next 10 years, we are still standing strong. In the next 20 years, we are still standing strong. In the next 30 years, we are still standing strong. In the next 40 years, we are still standing strong. Thank you, Jesus. Patoka Patelepa. Rekepos. Shatala. Rekepatalapaya. Asopata. We are grateful. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah to your name. We are thankful and we are grateful. Thank you for all that you've done through us and in us. For in Jesus' precious name we have prayed. Are you ready for the last confession in the month of October? Say with me, I decree that this month is still my month of prophetic fulfillment an advantage say every word of the Lord to me comes to pass every prayer that I have made is answered say I step out with peace and assurance because the Lord has granted my request as the Lord granted your request so the Lord has granted my request say in this month I descend my path in God's assignment and I take my place by the power of the Spirit, say my seat is now vacant. I refuse. I do my part in God's plan for the church in this time. Say because of me, others descend their place and they walk in it. As the body of Christ in this nation and in this generation, we discern prophetic seasons. Say we are united in purpose to conquer territories until the kingdoms of this world become the kingdom of our God. So we declare that by prophecy and by favor, good men arise and rule Nigeria. So in the local government, in the state government, in the federal government, in the legislature, in the judiciary, and in the presidency. Say, men, who fear the Lord and love the people are emerging. From this instant, supernatural orchestrations begin to take place, leading the just into power. Say every evil plot to circumvent the voting process is exposed and frustrated in the name of Jesus. Say Nigeria is on its way to better days. Hallelujah. Now say concerning CCI Global, we prosper in the will of God. Our testimony is preserved across generations. We are consistent in devotion, in doctrine, and in the miraculous. Say we are a force against the kingdom of darkness. We tear down satanic architectures and build kingdom systems in the name of Jesus. Say so we take the nations for our inheritance. A billion souls in 10,000 cities. We are moving. We are spreading. Arounding a perpetual victory. Parade of souls in the kingdom. Say so God is building his church. And the gates of hell, the gates of hell shall not prevail. Shall glory. We're
are those who are not ashamed of the gospel rejoice come on Christ represents us rejoice we are the light of the world and see we said on a hill cannot be hidden I want us to do something beautiful this morning could you please get our phones out your phones please Turn on your touch. I want to see lights up. Come on now. Come on now. Lights up. Crash representers, push your lights up. All right. Let's go. Are you ready? Yeah. Come on now. Let's go like this. Yeah. Yeah. You look so good! Woo! Say, some people base their whole existence On the cars that drive, all the clothes they want Now we get a proud to wrap our seat and even the poem that we were fun Why does you like Ever want a love still different story Ever want a has a different course I But before the details get to go There's one thing that unifies us all Push your head up with some of
sakabadi o believe to shine his light oh to worship you i live to worship you i live i live to worship you to worship you i live to
name of Jesus, this morning, I ask that by your spirit you preserve our sincerity. That every time we open up our mouth to sing or to praise, that everything that our mouth would utter, utter will be consistent with what our hearts are saying. Let there be a sincerity. Let there be a humility. Oh, Let's do it three times. Sing, I will die.
thank you that I love the brethren. Thank you that I love to worship. Thank you, Father. The Bible says it is God who walks in you to will and to do of his good pleasure. I want to give you a few seconds. Just thank him for that. Thank him for that. Thank him for that. That in a world of distractions, you still love Jesus. Thank him for that. Thank him for that. That he has captured your heart the way he has done. Praise this king's man redeemer who has redeemed you and has captivated you with his love, preserved you with his love. You've gone through myriads of temptations, but you are still here. You are still here. Some of you, not because you are even so disciplined, but because his love has restrained you. His love has preserved you. His love. Thank you for his love. Boast about his love. you for your love. Kapaya. Thank you, Jesus. Prosa palia kapai. Epo rote le kapai. Ronso prete kapai. Thank you, Lord. Glory to your name, Lord. In Jesus' mighty name we've prayed. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Listen, it's very interesting. There's someone to my left here and someone at the back there. And you have the same scenario. And this is it. And listen very attentively to me. The Lord has been long suffering about people in your family who have used negative spirituality to torment, to oppress. And this is the word of the Lord. He says, now with a strong hand. Now with a strong hand. Now with a strong hand. The oppressor and his oppression must cease. Now with a strong hand. Now with a strong hand. There's one of you in six weeks. You're going to see what I'm saying. It says, now with a strong hand, the oppressor and his oppression must cease. And this is what I see in the realm of the spirit. And I'm, I'm not going to say more than that. I see a mighty angel visit your family. A mighty angel. And this is, this is how you would know. Several years of difficulty will just open up suddenly. Several years. Several years. Several years. Several years. And the oppression on mommy will just cease suddenly. Because he says now with a strong hand, the oppressor and his oppression must cease. And that's the word of the Lord. Glory to his name. Thank you, Father, in the name of Jesus. Lord, in this service, I thank you that you have preeminence and your spirit is moving in directions and giving personal ministrations even beyond the words that I speak and that I order. And in the mighty name of Jesus, even cases that I do not have the time to mention. Your omnipresent touch is meeting people at the point of their needs. Changing lives. Altering destinies for the better. Changing names. Changing reputations for the better. I copy Rusepa.
Bele tongra si bele tokaya es tos vele takapai. There is someone I, I see you crying because you are a responsible person, but you entered into this debt financially, and you've been crying. Lord, how did I get here? Lord, how do I get out? The Lord is asking me to tell you that His favor is speaking for you. I'm saying His favor is speaking for you. I'm saying His favor is speaking for you. I'm saying you, you, you did a transaction that went bad. It wasn't your fault. But now you are in trouble. The Lord is asking me to tell you He has seen your tears. And He's going to step in a way you never even anticipated. This is the word of the Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, Father. Glory to your name, Lord. In Jesus' mighty name, we've prayed. I want to see if you remembered anything from last week. I give you a few seconds. Rejoice in the Lord. Rejoice in the Lord, your salvation, your love, your love. Do it the Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Before you sit, I just want to welcome everyone who is tuned in online. Can you all say welcome to church? I want you to know that there is no distance in the realm of the Spirit, and the power of Jesus is about to touch you like never before in Jesus' name. Say loud, Amen. amen. You may please be seated. Greet someone to your left and to your right. They may be a Manu fan who might really need it. You don't know what people have gone through. It's been a long weekend. Just encourage someone. Hallelujah. Praise the name of the Lord. Thank you, Jesus. I have a few minutes to share the word of God with you. You see, what I'm about to share with you is one of those sermons that can only be communicated by the help of the Spirit. Let me tell you something. If you preach a sermon that people desperately need and they get it, that's a miracle. I'm telling you it's a miracle that you preach a sermon and that as the Word of God promises according to its reputation, it is a double-edged sword in the hearts of men and it causes people to bleed like some people you know they are bleeding in repentance like God this must change about me you know and the Word of God literally cuts out parts of their life that are inconsistent I'm telling you it's a miracle you know and it's it's my prayer this morning that the word of God will have that effect in your life. Say loud, amen. amen. Because you really need what I'm about to share. You really need it. I want to start with a story that we all know. In Acts chapter 9, the Bible tells us that Saul, who had been tormenting the church, oppressing the church, arresting people, got a letter permitting him to arrest even more people and on his way to Damascus ready to arrest even more people suddenly a bright light shone in front of him he fell off his horse you know and then suddenly a voice saw saw why are you persecuting me listen I don't know but man each time I read this my mind just comes to something that some of you have experienced before. Have you ever had a normal interaction with someone who has spiritual backing? I mean negative spirituality. <laughs> well, that's nothing to you because greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. You know that, right? You know, but when you, maybe you see in Hollywood movies, people have a simple quarrel and, and they just go like, you're talking to me? And they snap a finger and you have one nasty dream <laughs> God forbid maybe three old women come to you <laughs> or something like that I'm a pastor I've, I've seen many things but just just imagine the dilemma of Saul 
Yes, I know that I've stepped on toes. But this voice that I'm hearing, I don't know you. And you said I'm persecuting you. How, sir? How? Yeah, I've not been nice to some Christians, but who are you? You know, this is the problem with some of us. We are selectively nice and selectively kind. And we show selective honor. We show honor to people who are more powerful than we are. There was something I saw just at the fuel station. This guy who wanted to buy a fuel was trying to oppress the fuel attendant. And just a simple argument said, if I slap you, and so the foil attendant called someone, I think the head of security, and that guy came out. There are only few people I've seen in my life bigger than that guy. He just came. You know, and you know Nigerian, the way we, we like to do it. He said, you must slap him today. <laughs> and the guy began to stutter. He, he said, it's not you I'm talking to. No. And, you know, so what the guy was trying to communicate is, we are a team. Don't say it's not me you are talking to. <laughs> It's the same thing here. Yeah, I've been nice to those Christians that do too much. I, I, I beg your pardon. I haven't been nice to those Christians who do too much. I want them to stop. I want to arrest them. And then this great, powerful being appears in front of me, calls my name twice, and says, Why are you persecuting me? I don't know you, sir. Who are you, Lord? And he says, I am Jesus. And I am the one you are persecuting. Let me tell you this. It would, have, it would have still been a good story had Jesus said, why are you persecuting my children? Or why are you persecuting my family? He didn't say that. He said, why are you persecuting me? Oh God, please listen to this. Listen to this. This is serious. And I'm telling you, this information, you will need it when you see Jesus. If you learn what I'm telling you, it will make you better prepared to meet Jesus. This story tells us something very profound. It tells us that Jesus takes personal the way you treat his church. I know that every one of us doesn't mind being nice to God. I mean, we've prayed this morning and some of you said nice things. But some untrained Christians who don't understand what I'm teaching might be in the workforce, beefing someone in the workforce, but saying nice things to God. And I'm telling you, it doesn't work that way. He sees it as an affront to his own personality. Why are you persecuting not someone I care about, but me. He takes it personal. Oh, this is life changing. And in fact, for some of you, this is a warning. Because you see, Saul wouldn't have done anything to offend that guy. He wouldn't have done anything to offend that voice that he heard. Only a crazy person would dare. But to the other people, this divine being says it is me you are doing it to. So now, part of Christian training is to learn that everything I do to the brethren, everything I do to the church, I am doing it to God. Listen, it doesn't matter if it makes sense to you or not. I am telling you this is a spiritual fact that everything you do to the brethren, everything you do to the church, you are doing it to God. I know that we live in a culture that, you know, honors people we think are honorable and treats everyone else like trash. It doesn't work in the kingdom. Why are you persecuting me? Just in case you're not convinced, I'll give you another text. 
Matthew chapter 25. From verse 31, Jesus speaking, it says, When the Son of Man comes in His glory and all His holy, holy angels with Him, He will sit upon the throne of His glory. It says, And all nations shall be gathered before Him. And He says, He will separate the sheep from the goats. He's not talking about Lionel Messi. Not that type of goat. <laughs> He's talking about people who are unrenewed and in fact unconverted separate the sheep from the goat and this is what he will say to the sheep on the right hand he said for I was hungry and you gave me food I was thirsty and you gave me drink I was a stranger and you took me in. Let me tell you this. Let me tell you this. Let me tell you this. Oh my God. Listen to me. Listen to me. Listen to me. You know, in your natural training, there are some people who will come to you now and say, can you give me 10,000 error? And you will say, probably say, oh, I don't have that money right now. And there are some other people who will come to you and say, can you give me 50,000 naira? And if you don't have it, you will borrow. Mind you, it's not everybody who should come to you that you should listen to. There's a balance to it. I, if, you, if you want to understand the balance, listen to a sermon I preached years ago, Welfare Code. There is a biblical teaching for those kind of things. But I just use that to explain to you that in our natural proclivity, we are selective. In the way we show love and the way we show honor so it's not really about what we have it's about who is asking Jesus will never come to you and ask for anything and you will not go to you know I mean to the ends of the earth to make sure that he's comfortable if it was Jesus personally it's easy but then the people to whom he's talking even they are surprised you came to me hungry and I gave you food. Why? How? When were you hungry and I gave you food? When were you naked and I gave you clothing? When were you thirsty and I gave you drink? And then Jesus says, if you do this to the least of my brethren, oh my God, if you did this to the least of these, you have done it to me. This is what we call area of concentration in exams. This is going to change your life. If you do this to the least of the brethren. So it means every time someone who is blood-bought, sanctified, saved, comes to me genuinely for help because there are all kinds of people, you know what I'm saying. I, <laughs> I, I don't want to have to balance this sermon, but just listen to this. As much as is within my power, as much as it is within my power, I should help. And if I do, as far as Jesus is concerned, it was a personal favor to him. And when I see him, he's not going to say, oh, you did this for someone I care about. He's going to say, you did this for me. Because the spiritual logic is, if you cannot honor the men that you can see, how will you honor God who you cannot see? So, he takes the way you treat his church, his body, as though you were treating him that way. Come on, do you get it? This is serious. Oh my God. I'm not going to lie to you, even as your pastor... This makes me quiver. Like, I, I'm, I'm scared of this. That's not the scariest one. Look at Matthew chapter 18, verse 6. 
Jesus refers to people who belong to his kingdom as having the humility of the child. And then he says, whoever causes one of these little ones who believe in me to sin, it will be better for him to put a millstone. Sorry, let me read that right. He didn't say it would be better for him to put a millstone. It would be better if a millstone... Do you see the difference? The first one is he did it to himself. That's not what the Bible says. The second one is they did it to him. Okay? So this text is not advocating for suicide at all. It says it would be better for him if a millstone were hung around his neck and he were drowned in the depth of the sea. Meaning, if such a person died a horrible death, that will still be better compared to the kind of judgment that such a person is going to face. This is the word of the Lord. And you know, you know, it, oh my God. When I read all of this, I discover one thing immediately. First and foremost, when we talk about church, we don't really understand what the Bible is describing. There is a gap in the description. Because for us, let's be honest, it's not that deep. Are we, are we honest? You know, when you're reading it, you're like, sir, are we not taking this thing too far? <laughs> it's not that deep. How do you join church? A friend invites you, you come around, ah, you like the music, the pastor didn't preach bad, and so you're going to stay. And people leave for the most flimsy reasons. The most flimsy. And I don't even want to give examples. The most flimsy. Because it's not that deep. And as far as you're concerned, you have options. So it's just like KFC, you know, you're just like restaurants, you know. Do you have, oh, the, the food will be ready in 30 minutes. I'm hungry now. I need a, I need a restaurant, you know, that, ha, that has food ready to eat. So you go to another place. That's the kind of mentality, consciously or unconsciously, that some of us have. But when you read this, it's important you know that Jesus sees church differently and I can point out many differences <laughs> you know first and foremost church in our day is a lot more sophisticated for them to have church in Bible days all they needed to do was to gather that's all <laughs> that's all but now we need a certain type of keyboard and a certain type of microphone and a certain type of venue and let's be honest honest all of that is good in fact there are several huge advantages i mean just think about it that in today's day you can have hundreds of thousands of people in a place and one man will speak and they all hear technology is a blessing do you understand what i'm saying it is a blessing but sometimes it has its disadvantages because some of us have forgotten that even though these things are beneficial they are not what make us a church we've forgotten and so if we are worshiping and our worship is honest and you know what we're, 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 I mean we feel like we're in the third heaven already and then all of a sudden there's a power surge and the keyboard is not working you know, some people literally, it feels like you suck them from heaven down to earth. And they're like, what's going on? And they are waiting for the keyboard to come back on so that their worship can also come back on. So your worship and your devotion is powered by electricity. Your devotion is tech enabled. It's a problem. It's a problem. And so once upon a time, 
people could just gather together and for no other reason but the lyrics of the song no keyboard nothing as great as all those things are for god's sake you know i love those things you know but for no other reason but the lyrics the message it is so tr sweet to trust in Jesus, just to take him at his word, just to rest upon his promise and to know thus says the Lord and people are crying, crying and worshipping. Oh my God, haven't we lost something? Don't we need to get our focus back? Don't we need to get our focus back? How powerful we will be if that was our focus. If we didn't need to be incentivized to come to church, it was just the word of God. It's a word. Do you understand what I'm saying? And the word doesn't need, thank God if, you know, uh, there are other things there, there are props on stage and brilliant illustrations you know but if imagine i could just open ephesians chapter 5 and read it to you and explain it and you leave with your heart warm then you are blessed imagine the songs just spoke about Jesus just spoke about the cross just spoke about our reality in Christ and you're okay with that it, it doesn't always have to be embellished with all those things some people go so far as to abominate anything that is excellent anything that is fun you know and all of that and that's not what I'm saying but then there is a breed of Christians that literally cannot survive without all those embellishments. And it's a problem. Even the music has to sound so... Do you understand what I'm saying? Eh, 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 you, know, eh, you know, and let me catch you. Let me catch you. Let me catch you. We can argue if that's right or wrong. But let me catch you and answer this honestly. If while you were doing it, <laughs> your eyes just opened and you saw Jesus. <laughs> Will you adjust? <laughs> That's the question I have. Will you adjust? You know, we can argue if it's right or wrong. I'm just saying, if you saw Jesus, will you adjust? To be clear, my answer is no. <laughs> my own answer. Do you understand what I'm saying? Because anything I do, I do from my spirit. Even when I'm laughing or playing. Do you understand? In the service. But some of us, it is something else we have in mind. You know? And listen. We know that you are at least saved when you can be honest when we're discussing things like this. Now vibes, now vibes. At least be honest about that one so that we can correct ourselves. Do you understand what I'm saying? So, so listen, it's not about the beats. The Bible has no beat preference. There is no heavenly sound. There is no tape recorder that any one of us has heard. Do you understand what I'm saying? And these things vary from culture to culture. And Africans, our beat styles are more upbeat, you know, and more, maybe, do you understand, more energetic. And it doesn't necessarily make it more spiritual. What makes it spiritual is the sincerity of the heart. And in truth, the person to whom it is directed. We are not doing it just to feel good. We are doing it to worship. We are not doing it to be a happening church. Come on, can we talk about this? We are not doing this so that more people will come. And that's part of what I want to talk about. Listen, 
I want to be very careful in the way I phrase what I'm about to say. Are you aware that strictly speaking, the precursor for joining a church in the Bible was that you were born again? And the Bible, the Bible says, time and time again in the book of Acts, and as, as many as would be saved were added to the church. And that's not to say that people who are seekers cannot come to church. There, I mean, there's a lot of evidence. I mean, just look at the Acts 2. The advent of the Spirit. That as all that beauty was happening in the upper room, some other people got to hear it. And their curiosity gathered them together to say what is happening here. And that was occasion for Peter to preach to them and thousands of them were saved on the spot. You know, so that's powerful. So it's great to have events, you know, that can bring all and sundry. In fact, the reason Paul was teaching on tongues, for instance, the gift of tongues, and the way it is done in the church, the reason he's doing, he's doing that is this. He said, if you're doing it this way, and someone who occupies the position of the online, the seat of the online, someone, someone who is not exposed to spiritual things, sees you or hears you do it this way, what will they think? That means implicitly that Paul expected, do you understand what I'm saying? Also have services where such people will come. But I'm telling you and listen to me, especially those of you who are ministers of the gospel here, that by actual biblical design, the offering of the church should make sense for people whose appetites have changed. Do you understand what I'm saying? There are a lot of miracles that must happen for you to have church. Even from the definition church, called out gathering. The gathering is for people who are called out. Are you getting what I'm saying? You have to be called out to really have the gathering the way God intended it. And I'm not saying this, you know, to exclude anybody. I'm saying this because we, we need to remember like what God's actual design is. It's a called out gathering. People with the miracle of change desires, if you then be risen with Christ, what you seek will be different. Colossians 3 1. Seek those things which are above. Set your affections on things above, not on things on the earth. So when we gather together as people who are risen with Christ, it will show in our affection. It will show in our priority. Do you understand what I'm saying? I'm going to give you five miracles. that happen when called out people gather five miracles oh my god please I can kneel and beg you there is a culture particularly in this vicinity the island of Lagos we are great on religion but we are nomadic Commitment to church is hanging by the thread. And so when we have a special program, the whole place is packed. And so some people have become professionals at, at project management, thinking that's church. So we're always putting programs to keep you busy, you know, and so that more people will keep coming. And that's wrong. Do you understand what I'm saying? Listen. I believe that a clear mark of doing church should be sincerity in such a way that when we're inviting a guest artist or musician or minister, we're doing that because we sense prophetically that there is something that person has to offer for the service and the direction of the flow of the Spirit in that particular service, not because of the popularity of the person. Are you getting what I'm saying? I'm going to share more on this at the minister's conference because you see 
Loki, this is why we don't even really honor guests as we should. Because we don't truly really value them. We want to use them to get more people in our churches. That's why. That's why some churches invite guest ministers, guest pastors with no plan for their welfare. No plan. Because truth is, we don't honor these people. We don't. You want to use them. And so they see it. And some of them have responded. They have become professional. Do you, you understand what I'm saying? That is also wrong. But because some people don't know how to just flow with the love of Christ and do the right thing, they have to protect themselves. They, they, they will give you form to fill. You want to invite us, speak to this person, fill this form. Be, be, because it no longer comes naturally. A, a, a guest musician in this country, one of the people who believes he doesn't need to charge, they invited him out of the country. He flew with his team on his own, from his own pocket. Flew with his, out of the country. Are you listening to me? And when it was done, they said, God bless you, we were so blessed. You know, so now, he and his team are at the airport, no money, wondering how they will return. Ah, we were so blessed. Thank you very much. Ah, did you see the, the way the Lord moved as you were singing? Thank you, God bless you, see you later. You know, and this is the kind of culture that consciously or unconsciously we encourage. Even in this church, some of you, you wait for the banner, then you check to see if my face is on it. Ah, yeah, you thought I won't go there. <laughs> you know? And l let me tell you this. First and foremost, thank you. I'm being honest, thank you, you know, that you believe in my ministry so much. Some of you, the reason you do that is because you live so far away. And so it takes a lot of sacrifice to come all the way, you know, and so subconsciously, you want to be sure that it's apostle, you had all of that. But, but you know what, we can't have church that way. That's not church. That's program, not church. I'm tired of people Coming, calling regular programs church. We need to understand what church is. That's not church. You can't do church that way. And I'm telling you, it doesn't matter how great you think I preach. If people only come because I'm coming, I failed. I'm telling you. It means first and foremost, you don't believe in the people I've trained. And then secondly, it's some form of religious idolatry. This celebrity. It's, it's, I want you to have so much honor for the word of God, whoever is talking. Whoever. That's how we know that we, un we understand what this is about. Praise the Lord. So these are the miracles I want to talk about. The first miracle that will happen when we're not just gathering, you know, so, for some, because some, for some people, the same strategy, you gather people for a comedy show, you know, for a secular music show, it's the same strategy for church. Just put solid lineup on the banner and then they are incentivized to come. But when it's an actual conversion that is preempting the gathering, like the ecclesia of the Bible, the, that, that's the design, called out gathering. The first thing that will happen is the miracle of family. Do, do you understand what I'm saying? where people you never knew from Adam, you only met in the fellowship as time went on. 
more and more, you began to see them as family. And you develop a bond that is as strong as any biological tie that you've had. And maybe even stronger. Now, what I'm saying takes a miracle. Because you can't do this and not get your fingers burnt once in a while. Oh my God. You will see all kinds of human beings in church. But God's mind about this will not change. Do you understand what I'm saying? He still wants us to see each other as family. And that's going to take a miracle. That despite all the church hurt you've experienced, you don't give up on this. Because some of you to protect yourself, and to protect your vulnerability, you do the barest minimum. You know, you come quite all right. But listen, some of you have probably never spoken to anybody. And you've been coming to this church for months. Before we are done with the service, you disappear. That's not church. It's a modern style of church. But it's so foreign from the Bible. And it's even more pronounced, you know, in vicinities that are, you know, where people demographically are doing better financially and all of that. It, it's, it's, can I speak to you? I'm your pastor. You know, I love you. You know, so it's, it's, it's a show of pride. You want to keep your honor and your freshness by all means. And the devil knows how to catch us. Have you noticed? Ha, ah, Jesus, I'm really going to talk today. Have you noticed that when people hit a certain level of popularity, they can't come to church anymore? Some of it is you people. It's your fault. Because when they come to church and they're trying to focus on Jesus, they turn around and they are saying, some of your cameras on. So they are so conscious. After a while, they try, but they can't, they can't anymore. We've made it impossible for such people. Impossible. I remember the last time I went to like a really public restaurant. I'm just with my friend eating, you know, and then with my toothpick, I talked like this. I saw video camera. Hey, <laughs> God. Another time. I was stopped, you know, at, a, at an army checkpoint because Lawrence was driving and Lawrence gives Yao Boy vibes. <laughs> I love you, Lawrence. <laughs> you know? So they stopped us, you know, and I don't like to just put out, I am, I'm, you know, do, do you understand? Do your work and let's go. Treat me like everyone else. So they wanted to do a search. They told us to calm down. And as, as I'm there, Someone is trying to video. I don't know what, how they were trying to spin the story. Do you understand? I, all kinds of things. You all just be praying for me, you know? So it was even another soldier that caught the guy and brought the guy to me. He said, this guy, they video you. So he now said uh, that he just wanted to send me the video later and say he saw me. You know? Listen, I can go on and on. So it was then the soldier said, Ah, why didn't you tell me you are a pastor? Oh, you sorry, go. You know, you know, and all of that. But, but listen, at the end of the day, the kind of reasons for which people stop coming also reflect the importance they place on the gathering. Because if church is family, there's nowhere to go. 
some of you have nasty relatives biological relatives you cope with them how much more church do you understand what I'm saying and you, you, you're learning to accommodate people's excesses is is an evangelical work because God is working on some people don't with your lack of patience frustrate their process are you getting what I'm saying because some people are just finding their way but you expect everybody to be perfect it's a problem and so it's, it's a miracle when you know oh my god something happened in Matthew chapter 12 from verse 46 Jesus was preaching to a multitude and then the Bible says that his biological mother and brothers came and asked for him so someone came to say your mother and brothers are looking for you you know what Jesus said he said who is my mother hey God <laughs> Jesus said he said who is my mother and who are my brothers he pointed to the people listening to him preach he says these are my mother and my brothers he says anyone who hears the word of God and does them that's family because you see when it comes to biological ties we say things like blood is thicker than water guess what we're also united by blood in fact our tie is stronger because you see nobody in your biological family died for you they gave birth to you but they didn't die for you we are united by blood as I'm standing here I know people who are not my biological family that can take a bullet for me I, I have no doubts that they can they go through unimaginable length you know to be there for me and all of that and you know it's it's part of the blessings of koinonia like God thank you thank you for that that because of you I inherited brothers and sisters and family there are some people some of my relatives will first maybe betray me or deny me before them some of you know what I'm saying some of you have people like that and maybe, just in case my family is, is watching I mean extended family not nuclear <laughs> <laughs> I mean that's why Jesus will say in Matthew chapter 19 verse 29 he says everyone who has left house Matthew 19 29 left house or brothers or sisters or father or mother or wife or children or lands for my namesake will reap or receive a hundredfold and inherit in eternal life so meaning even if they kick you out because you believe in Jesus there must be family I'm, do you understand what I'm saying you will have 1,000 in fact 100 do you understand what one hundred one one hundred thousand in replacements crane guy watch their head on I can I can see it from your expression. That's what you I said it I said it right. Okay, don't worry. They are watching it, you are fine. <laughs> Hallelujah. You know, so he, he's saying, even if you find yourself in a precarious situation where your biological family gives up on you, there should be hundred families in Christ ready to receive you immediately. Ah, uh, they say you're not come. come. <laughs> So by God's design, nobody should be able to use that to torment you. Uh, we will disown you. Ah, uh, uh, no, no. <laughs> For church? Come. If you, don't fall, if you don't stop calling this Jesus, we will seize your car. We will buy it back. <laughs> we will buy it back fast. It's a miracle because some people try to take advantage of these kind of things do you understand what I'm saying they do the second miracle 
is love for the fellowship of the saints. The reason I want to separate this from the first point is because just because you consider someone family doesn't mean you actually have regular fellowship with the person. Some of you have, oh my God, there is an ungodly culture in this city where you can have your biological relatives in the same Lagos and you don't see in months, maybe a year. Is that true or false? It's an ungodly culture. But we get so swamped with work. But in the realm of the spirit is different. Where Paul tells the church at Ephesus, Ephesians 1.15, Wherefore I also, ever since I heard of your faith in the Lord Jesus and love unto the saints. In fact, he knew that they had faith in the Lord Jesus by their love for the saints. He knew it by their love. And John says in 1 John chapter 2 verse 9, Anyone who claims to be in the light and hates his brother is in darkness until now. Listen, meaning by your attitude, I have the right to invalidate whatever confession of faith you claim to have. You couldn't possibly be saved and act this way and be so indifferent about God and his church. It's not possible. Because don't forget where we started. If you are doing this to the brethren, you are doing this to Christ. You can't do this to Christ. Love for the saints. So it's a miracle where, you, listen, oh my God, what every other the aspect of your life. When you develop interests, you look for interest groups. It's just the way it works. That's why we have tech Twitter and legal Twitter and all of that because you see, even Twitter has learned to curate content that is consistent with your interest. You, it, it, come on, are, are you talking to me or not? Let me put this to you. How many of you could barely survive the lockdown during COVID? Like, it felt like you were losing your mind. You, you, the, the importance of fellowship was reiterated more than ever before to you. Raise your hand, let me see. Be honest. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. And listen, that means, okay, so only five people are there. Raise your hand now. <laughs> okay, maybe it's only me. It got to a time I just drove around the estates, you know, <laughs> just for sanity. Don't lie, you love fellowship. You just don't raise church that much. And it's a problem. The COVID lockdown has made it clear to God. what your view on social interaction really is. No matter what you claim your doctrine is about gathering and how important it is, you value association more than you're willing to admit. And make no mistake, it's a problem. If you don't find this internal longing to be with people who also love to pray, to be with people who also love Jesus, who also love to worship. You, you don't have that desire. It is symptomatic of something more serious than you realize. Because I'm telling you unequivocally that faith in the Lord Jesus is always followed by love for the saints. Always. Always. Please, are you listening to that? It, is, it, it was worth fighting for in the Bible. God told Pharaoh, let my people go that they may serve me. Listen, some of you think it was just a noble move that God made. That ah, you've been oppressing these people, let them go. No, it was, it was beyond nobility. It was worship that they may serve me. Allow them to have the freedom to, to fellowship and to worship. You know, and if you don't allow them, there will be plagues. The 
length that God went just tells you how important the fellowship is. Do you get what I just said? So what is the first miracle? And what's the second? And number three is love for the word of God. Love for the word of God. Huh. You know, Paul was preaching for a long time, writing to the Romans. He had done chapter 1, chapter 2, chapter 3, chapter 4, chapter 5, chapter 6, chapter 7, chapter 8, chapter 9, chapter 10. He gets to chapter 11, verse 33. He takes a pause to say, All oh, the depth of the riches both of the knowledge and the wisdom of God. How unsearchable are his judgments and his ways past finding out. Oh, the depth. Oh, the depth. Oh, the depth. Now, this is a miracle for you to love the word of God this way, for you to have pondered about spiritual things so much. You know, have you ever blotted out and, you know, and had this outburst of appreciation for the wisdom of God in his word. Have you ever read the Bible and it got to a point and you're like, ah, God. You know, if, if, listen, this is what Paul was praying that you would experience. With the saints. Because the saints, the saints experience it. He says, I bow my knees. To the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, of whom the whole family in heaven and earth is named, that He might grant you to be strengthened by, you know, by the Spirit in your inner man. And He says that you might comprehend with the saints the length, the breadth, the depth. He, so, so when you come to church and you are unconverted, what I expect to happen is you see people so joyful. And you know they're not joyful because they have a lot of money or because the situation in the country is right. And you know, if you're not saved, you must want what they have. Oh, the depth of the riches, both of the knowledge and the wisdom of God. You, you must see depth in the word of God. You can travel far for school, travel far for wedding what about reboot camp oh I'm, I'm being honest with you you know spiritual things unparalleled is it, is it, the Bible says buy the truth sell it not do you, do you understand what I'm saying so it, it's an investment it's an investment. Thank God for online church. It's not the same. It's not the same. It's not the same. Come on, some of you know it's, it's not the same. It's not the same. And when prophetically I said there is someone here, more often than not, is someone actually here, not online. But I'm just talking about the word of God. Some of you can go one month without hearing the word of God. Listen, you should cry. And if you haven't cried about it, that's something to cry about. You cried that you didn't cry. <laughs> that how, how did I go this long without church? You know, I remember, you know, when I just got filled with the Spirit, you know, and all of that, <laughs> I had to balance it. It was the other extreme. I remember, okay, for instance, on my convocation ceremony, the morning of that day, I woke up early. I was reading 1 Corinthians, and it was sparking my brain. Like, the time passed, you know, I had to just bathe, you know, and wear that gown and go and, you know, so... I remember, God forgive me, I, oh my God, my parents attend this church, Jesus, you know. So, they were celebrating me, congratulations, and 
in my mind, I'm just like, oh, let this end. I was picturing my Bible open on the table in the room. Like, I can't wait to get back. Finish what I, you know, finish what I started this morning. Like I said, it's a miracle. It's a miracle that God can walk in your heart. I'm going to stop here. There's a lot more I can share, but time is far spent. But listen, God wants you to enjoy fellowship with others besides yourself. Not just reading the Bible to yourself and feeling happy. You know, some people say, I'm the church. That's both right and wrong. Because we are the body of Christ. Say loud amen. amen. Come on, say loud amen. amen. I'll touch on the last one quickly. You, you must love prayer. That's not the last one, but I will stop there. You love prayer. You know, I was, as I was meditating, I thought about this. Just imagine Jesus ascending. Before he ascended, he had told the disciples, tarry in Jerusalem until you are endued with power from on high. And so they started to gather together in the upper room. They don't know when this power from on high will come. Aye, Jesus. Do you understand what I'm saying? So, the first day, they were praying, and guess what? They were praying in their known language. Have you ever tried to pray a whole day in English? <laughs> Maybe you should try it. It will task your knowledge of the scriptures. Because yeah, yeah, some of you, every three sentences, you, be, you become idiosyncratic. You'll be repeating the same thing. Have you seen people? Every, almost everybody has this idiosyncrasies they repeat. Everlasting Father, King of Glory, I thank you. Everlasting Father, King. Some of you is, oh Lord God Almighty, you know. I, why are you repeating it? You are so robotic. You, you, you haven't learned to just free yourself and you know, pray using your mind, your knowledge of the scriptures and your spirit and invest your emotions. It takes a miracle to love praying with people. Ah, I pray alone, but praying with people hits different. It's different. And someone who works in my office, you know, one day, I said, come, let's pray together. Let me, let me use your grace small. <laughs> because, you know, that, that might have been a dramatic way of putting it. But you see, there is something about the graces in others. Do, do you understand what I'm saying? That has this cumulative effect that makes you fly easy. It makes you fly easy. It makes you fly easy. Corporate prayer. You, the fact that you have an argument for gathering might be a problem. Or against gathering, is it really necessary? You, you are you're already backsliding. Uh, do you understand what I'm saying? You should love... You see, David said, I was glad. So, now they are waiting. So they pray day one, nothing happens. They pray day two, nothing happens. They pray day three, nothing happens. Some of you, by day four, you say, you know what, I'll be back. Let me just go and buy bread. By the time you as you're buying that bread, that's when the spirit will come. <laughs> well, if you're lucky, just the same way it happened at the time of Moses. Even those who were still in the camp got it. Yeah. That's the mercy of God. But it also talks about the power of routine. The fact that they stayed. They didn't know when. So from the ascension to the Pentecost, theologians say it was 10 days. 10 full days praying. You know, I was reading in a book and I, I, you know, I read about a particular church that came together and read the Bible out loud, beginning to end. They took turns. It took them three days. Okay, you will read chapter one, Genesis chapter two, like that. They took turns. They read it out loud. 
And you're like, ah, Jesus. But if not serious. <laughs> you, 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 listen, you have to redirect your desires. There is a fondness for the scriptures you will never have until you spend time with it. It takes time to develop fondness. It takes time. God wants to walk that miracle in us. Say loud, amen. amen. I don't think it's too early to say this, but one of my greatest prayers for next year, I don't care how God is going to do it, this year will be the last time we won't have midweek service or midweek service will be online for Island Church. It's last time. Last time. Don't, see, I've wanted this thing, so <laughs> it's condition. <laughs> and that's why, listen, I believe in prosperity. Now, that's, that statement can be misinterpreted in different ways because people who say the same thing probably mean different things. But I don't want money to ever hinder us from just focusing. Do you understand what I'm saying? And we're close, don't worry. Some things are happening. So, but as it stands, average of 100 hours, you know, annually. It costs us a lot of money. I, that's what, let me just believe it like that right now. So, um, we're trusting God for more. I'll just share these two last things and then we close. Hallelujah. Have you learned anything today? Yes, sir. Have you been blessed? Yes, sir. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. You know, someone came to my office and shared a very powerful testimony. He was faced with a temptation. Someone, you know, offered him a deal that was not exactly upright. And because he was going through a lot, he was considering it. When I'm here, in the few minutes I'm here, I, I can only give a couple of words of knowledge. You, do you understand what I'm saying? I will say the one I can say and then go. I'm just telling you the power of corporate gathering. So he just came as he was going. A lady he had never seen before just said, Hello, the Lord said I should tell you. Hey, I love this church. <laughs> Bah, bah, bah. <laughs> the Lord said I should tell you that this thing, don't, don't do it. He will compensate you. He will give you his own. Have a nice week. <laughs> you was like, what did I just hear? <laughs> Came to my office to tell me. In my mind, I was just like, I love my people. My people. Oh, now they, I said, we they see, no be. Have you now? <laughs> <laughs> Do you understand? So now, even I, your trainer, I know that no matter how, it, the way God has designed it, there are some things that he wants to do through you. That's why he's a body. And that's why I abominate, you know, this culture of watching to see if I'm the one preaching. It, it means you don't get it. Because in the New Testament church, we all get to participate. And so you must believe in the ministry of the Spirit through whoever holds the microphone to stand here. And in fact, in the ministry of the Spirit through you. Because God may have a word for the person by your side. And you have more access to the person than I do. And that's the kind of mindset. Let me tell you this. Sometimes I, I read some things in the Bible and I'm just like, in modern day church this doesn't make sense for instance in the bible there was someone who was op in open sin they were trying to correct him he didn't hear so this is what they did to correct him okay since you will not hear we are going to forbid you from gathering with us if you try that in today some people will say hey, so wait in your church But you know, even the Bible language, they said deliver him to Satan because 
It felt like stopping him from gathering with the church meant that he didn't belong to the ecclesia. And it was something that it was a drastic move. It's a drastic move to not belong to a fellowship. Do you understand what I'm saying? Is it dr- so they called it deliver to Satan. 1 Corinthians 5. It's a drastic move. So the person by that drastic move learned and repented. Some people they deliver themselves. They don't worry. <laughs> When the church said, we will no longer allow you to gather with us, he, he, he probably cried. Started crying. Ah, oh yeah, I will change, I will change, I will change. Well, till further notice. Ah, what? Oh my God. And Paul had to write again in, in 2 Corinthians 2. Hey, hey, forgive him, re, you know, reinstate him, restore him, you know, and all of that. Some other people say, too, we do it in the church. He said, I do understand. <laughs> you know, so I just read that. Because we have a different view. We think we have a project management view to church, but it's deeper than that. For you have not come to a mount that may be touched or that burns with fire or brimstone. It says, You are come to Mount Zion, the city of the living God, the heavenly Jerusalem, innumerable company of angels the general assembly and church of the firstborn, he says, and to Jesus, our gathering, listen, part of the prophecy of the Messiah is this, he says, unto him shall the gathering of the people be, our gathering is to him, remember that when the person by your side pisses you off, or when you have a fallout with someone in the workers group, or when, you know, you don't really like where they ask you to sit and it just looks like the protocol has a particular bee for you or you or something like that. My gathering is to Jesus. And to the blood that speaks better things than the blood of Abel. So we've, listen, every time we gather, our estimation of the people in attendance is wrong. Because there are innumerable company of angels. And then our gathering is to Jesus. You know, for me as a preacher, that keeps me on the edge. That every sermon I preach, Jesus is listening. You think about that. Just imagine Jesus in the audience. Because he says our gathering is to Jesus. I've never preached a sermon that Jesus didn't hear. We've never had a service that Jesus didn't attend. He watches everything. My response to the worship. My response to the brethren. My generosity. My prayer attitude. My prayer posture. He watches everything. Hallelujah. God wants a need so strong that the unbelievers will know us by our love. Think about that. They will know us by our love. He said, by this shall men know that you are my disciples. But, but the way they, when they see us and they can sense the atmosphere of love, they say, not them, or church people. Because there has to be a type of love amongst us that is foreign to the world. That also takes a miracle. But it's possible. Hallelujah. It is His will that every need be supplied. You are important to I pray for you. You pray. Is that true though? I love you. I need you. So this next line, sincerely, sincerely say, I want to tell you with words from my mouth. I love you. I love you. I need you to say it is his will. Say it is his will. 
to survive is too harsh God calls you the body of Christ for a reason and as important as the eyes are they can't survive without the nervous system and without a heart and so that means even when I don't realize that person by my side has more importance to me listen even as a man of God you know Paul could say wait to see you that I might impart unto you some spiritual gifts to the end that you might be established but in the next verse he says that I might be comforted by the sharing of faith both of you and by myself listen so even as a man of God I am fed by feeding the privilege of preaching to you blesses me and preserves me and keeps me accountable there is no body in the body of Christ that does not need fellowship both clergy and none. We all need each other. And all for the miracle to recognize the importance of the koinonia, the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the fellowship of the Spirit. It says, be with you all, not just with you as an individual, but in our gathering, meaning there are manifestations of the Spirit that we will only see when we are united. Before I drop the microphone, we're going to pray just two very quick prayers. Father, in the name of Jesus, help me to see my contribution in the corporate body. Help me. I have been concerned just about my own self, my spiritual growth, you know, how well I'm doing. But now, I have a ministry to the body. The Bible says that the whole body is fitly joined together by that which every joint supply. Lord, in this local church in particular, what is my role? What will you have me do? Help me recognize it. Sometimes, because I don't even see how important my coming is, I, I, I stay away from church and I think no one will notice. But you notice. And maybe I do because I haven't recognized what role you will have me play. Help me. Help me. Help me. Help me. Help me. Maybe if I recognize it better, I'll be more tolerant. Because I'm as responsible for this work and the prosperity thereof as the said man, the pastor himself. Help me. Help me. Help me. In Jesus' mighty name, we've prayed. You see, Jesus tells a story about a good Samaritan. And listen, oh my God. Sometimes I look at that story and I'm in tears because it's the predicament of the modern day church that you can be so individualistic of your personal devotion. The people who ign ignored that guy who was fighting for his life, they were all coming from church. One was a lover, the other one was the chief priest. All of them were coming from church. They thought that their sacrifice to God is enough. Listen, we think it's just vertical instead of horizontal also. And just the nerve. After going to church, offering your sacrifice to see someone in need and, and walk past. Sometimes we're so insensitive. Listen, look at that testimony I shared. God can use you. Some of you, it might not even necessarily be prophetic, at least to your own reckoning, but it might just be an encouragement. Just a compliment. And that might be what the person desperately needed. Lord, I pray in your church, use me to be a blessing. Use me to be a blessing. Walk through me. Walk through me. Walk through me. Walk through me. Help me to recognize corporate responsibility. How I can be a blessing to others besides myself. Walk through me. Walk through me, Jesus. Walk through me. 
Walk through me. Walk through me. Walk through me. Give me a heart of service. A heart of service to want to, to help me to want to be there for someone besides myself. For some of you, you want to say, Lord, my prayers, even my prayers have been so selfish. I only pray for myself, but I repent. I repent. I repent. I repent. I repent. I repent. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. In Jesus' mighty name, we've prayed. Listen. What I'm about to say is difficult, but it's the will of God, and so we will try. In the most discerning way possible. I'm saying discerning because there are some people who are wolves in sheep, sheep clothing. But in the most discerning way possible, can we trust God for deep connections in this local assembly? Deep connections. That, that what this Bible talks about about a friend that sticks closer, closer than a brother, that you can have it in God and in your local church. Deep connections. I, I want you to open your heart to it. Lord, I'm going to try. After we share the grace, I won't just disappear. You, you know, not just because pastor said it, but from my heart. I'm going to want to ask someone, how are you doing? What do you do? You know, and all of that. And establish deep connections. Not because you want relationship. In fact, mostly guys to guys, girls to girls. Listen, listen. We're talking about the love of Christ. No strings attached. Not because you, you know. Not because you drive a, a good car. Please, listen. Don't. In your trying to obey the word, don't now sin again. You're not sizing people up. Do you understand what I'm saying? You're not gauging their dressing. Just from your heart. And, and there, there, there can be like you can allow the Lord lead you trust God for that Father in the name of Jesus I have prayed for this one thing of all the things that I desire from for this branch in particular it is this one that will be one that in a culture that is used to relationships that only hang by a thread you will establish amongst us deep connections that we would truly be there for one another, not just encouraging each other to pray, to worship, to come to church, but even in the small things like welfare and just being there for one another. I pray, Lord, for deep connections. I pray that even others will see the connections here and consider us family. In the mighty name of Jesus. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' mighty name we've prayed. Come and say loud amen, somebody. Amen. Hallelujah. Please be seated. Hallelujah. Glory be to God. Please package your offerings. In Celebration Church, we give a tenth of our income putting our money where our faith is, recognizing God as our source, we know that our expenditure always reveals our value. And so one easy way to improve our discipleship and consecration is to be intentional about our, our giving and to learn to respond to God generously. You know, this morning as I was preparing, I personally, you know, I just said, Lord, you've been good to me. And this is how I'm going to respond. You know, this is how I'm going to respond. Please come and clarify this. I'm, I'm going, I'm, I just said, you know what, Lord, I'm going to do more than I usually do in my giving. I, I, I'm, to, I'm talking personal conversation this morning. Hallelujah. You know, so as much as possible, I want you to respond. Thank you, Jesus. If you're giving a tithe, a tenth of your income, please stand to your feet. Stand to your feet. Someone might even ask, why do we stand? Because, you see, 
Paul used the generosity of the Macedonian church to provoke the Corinth to generosity. So it, it's, it's good when you see people who have financial consecrations to the Lord. Those of you standing, please say this with me, Lord Jesus, I put you first in my finances because all that I have comes from you. My job or my business is just a vehicle. You are my source. And therefore, I honor you. And I thank you that I'm replenished to abound even more generously. In Jesus' mighty name. Amen and amen. Please be seated. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Time is fast spent, but there is someone here. You had a contract to, to do something, and you, it, it, it was to, you were to do it about six times, and it just ended. And you're wondering, Lord, what next? What next? Well, the Lord is asking me to tell you a big door is coming. A big door. I wish I could ask you to come out, but no time. But a big door is coming. You, you, you have been doing a contract, something about supplying, and you just did the last batch, and you're wondering, Lord, what next? According to the word of the Lord, the favor of the Lord is about to do even exceeding abundantly above all that you've asked or thought. Say loud amen for that person. Amen. Hallelujah. Please package your offerings. Package your offerings. Thank you, Jesus. <laughs> Next week, Sunday, we'll make it two years since this particular branch started. God is so good, right? We're so grateful to him. Next week, Sunday, we're going to be having service at the podium. You remember the podium? We used it once before. Um, can, we, can we have the address on the screen? Before the end of the service, we're going to put it on. It's there, right? The podium. Not because it's a special program, but uh, listen, by the grace of God, we are very close, uh, you know, <laughs> to getting our own place. Very close, you know, but so this place won't be available next week. Hey God. Sha will be at the podium and we're going to have like a very great time. All right. So I, I want you to come ready and expect that. Invite a friend and let's just praise God for two years. Right. And then right after that will be the 10th anniversary of Celebration Church Global. And so we're going to have a combined service for all our Lagos churches and service will be by 12 noon that's upper sunday not this you know that's november 13 and it's going to be at conga studios all right conga conga place conga place right all right um just um beside nikki art gallery all right and um we're going to be so blessed we're, we're hosting the great man of god president of PFN Bishop Francis Walioke. And he's just going to declare a blessing over us as a church. I want you to come ready. Hallelujah. And come expectant. It's going to be a prophetic meeting. That's all I can say. It's going to be a prophetic meeting. Hallelujah. All right. Please stand to your feet. If you've given your offering already. Lord, in the name of Jesus, we thank you for the privilege to give. We do this cheerfully and generously. The Lord is asking me to tell you this. In just 10 seconds, see prophetically the reach that God is going to give us in this vicinity. See many more people added to the faith, discipled, groomed. You know, just see it prophetically. Oh, Lord, we thank you. Lord, we thank you. Lord, we thank you. And so shall it be. Thank you, Father, for the privilege to give. We thank you that we are bound even more generously. 
We put our money where our faith is and we ask that your word will run swiftly in this city and be honored even as it is with us in Jesus' mighty name. Say loud, amen. amen. Welcome the choir as they minister. If I was an eagle, I would lift myself, spread my wings and fly. If I was a lion, I would run into the jungle and give the loudest roar. And if I was the sun, yes, I would rise and let the morning shine my light so bright. so much pastor we've been instructed corrected and we grow into maturity amen. amen please be seated for a few announcements the reboot camp is 40 days away <laughs> hallelujah glory to god reboot camp is 40 days away it's a weekend long program friday saturday and into sunday so you want to ensure that you have your accommodation transportation and logistics plan for the reboot camp we have made some arrangements for you 
We've made hotel bookings. We've, we've made um, transportation arrangements. So if you want to take advantage of that, please write after the service, head over to the information desk for more information regarding that. All right, so next week Sunday is CCI Lagos Island's second year anniversary. Where are we having service? The Podium Lecky. All right, so service is 9 a.m. at the Podium Lecky. Invite someone, come with a friend, and we're going to have an amazing time. Amen. So talking about anniversaries, our 10th year anniversary at CCI Global is next month. Hallelujah. And we're going to have a special minister's conference. So if you are a minister of the gospel, music minister, you're a preacher of the word, you would need to register. And so right now the banner is displayed and the link is displayed. Ensure that you register. The minister's conference is going to hold at the podium Ikeja. All right, so you need to register. And on the 13th, we're going to have a combined celebration service at the Conga place. Praise God. Membership class registration is ongoing. If you have been a Sunday Sunday attendee of CCI Lagos Island and you, you know you've said to yourself, you want to be part of what God is doing in Celebration Church and you want to be a member. It's an opportunity for us to get to know you and for you to know us and also join our system where we can support you, not just with your spiritual growth, but in your every life affair. Please write after the service, head over to the information desk and register. Praise Jesus. Talking about building a strong community, we have MAP groups in Celebration Church. A MAP is a small community of believers living around your vicinity. The aim is for us to pray, bond, and connect in meaningful ways. Also at the information desk, you can get mapped to a particular group near you. Praise Jesus. We have some of us who celebrated their birthdays during the course of the week. It was Busola Lawal's birthday. It was Damaris Adeyi's birthday. It was Ibube Isaac's birthday. It was Shubomi Olorunibe's birthday. It was Ayeni Paul's birthday. It was Bode Bolaho's birthday. Can we say a big happy birthday to them? It is indeed your year of the greater light. Um, if you are having your service with us for the first time in CCI Lagos Island, I would like for you to rise to your feet this morning. If it is your first time in CCI Lagos Island, come on, please rise to your feet this morning. information to share with you. We also want to capture this moment with you. So please um, take your bags and your belongings to your left and to your right. Go with the people. We want to take a picture with you. We also want to share some information with you. If it's your second time in CCI Lagos Island, can you signify by the show of hands? If it's your second time, God bless you. God bless you. Um, so this, this, this tells us that you saw value the first time you came and you came again. Right after the service, we want to have a brief word with you. So at the end of the service, to my left, um, I want to have a brief word with you just after the service. Can we rise to our feet this morning and begin to declare to our week? What kind of week are you going to have? In this week, I walk in power. In this week, I walk in precision. In this week, I, I walk in love to my brethren. Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Well, the media team has given me work to do. We are doing... Um, 
I, I hear we're doing like a video collage or something like that for 10th anniversary. And so they want us to do like a video recording of us taking the benediction. Hallelujah. So I think I'm also going to ask um, as many of you, maybe those of you who are in, in front, you can come forward a little more so that. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Come on, you're, you're going to be excited about this, aren't you? Yes, All right. <laughs> Celebration Church Island. Yes. This phone is hanging on. <laughs> what is going on? Anyway, you're using yours, right? All right. <laughs> Are you ready? Yeah. Say with me, we serve God by His Spirit. We serve God by His Spirit. We post in Christ Jesus. We, Christ Jesus. we put no confidence in the flesh. We experience progress and joy in the faith. Say a billion souls. And Christ for Christ with joy. God bless you all. Thank you. Have a great week. Thank you very much. Hello there. We trust you had an amazing time in service today. And we believe that the word of God blessed your hearts richly. As you go into this new week, we encourage you to be a doer of the word. By applying yourself to everything that was taught today. Draw up action points and revise your notes. Please remember that our midweek service holds by 6 p.m. this Wednesday on our YouTube and Mixler platforms. We look forward to fellowshipping with you again. And as you go for this week, please bear in mind that our purpose as believers is to know God and to make him known. Ensure to tell someone about Jesus. Have an amazing week.